Can we fit this memory expansion card into the M1 Mac Mini? Let's find out. Before we begin, please consider subscribing, sharing, and liking our videos. This tell us we are doing something right. Hello again. This is part 2 of our prior video where we installed an internal USB port. The first time was a proof of concept to see if it can be done. Now that we've proved it, the new challenge is trying to solder more wires to more pads to achieve USB 3.0 speeds so that we can install an NVMe memory stick. If you haven't seen our other videos, I've been doing all sort of things with the extra space in the M1 Mac Mini. So check out our other videos to see what I've been doing with all the extra hardware you see in here. My rules will still be the same as before. 1. Make no permanent mods to the M1. 2. All components must be all internal. 3. It must not be noticeable from the outside. Okay, let's start. Using USB 3.0 gives us an added benefit of faster speeds, but as you can see, the USB 2.0 cable is only 3.8mm and USB 3.0 is a whopping 5.6mm. First, we'll need to remove the USB 2.0 cable that we soldered in from our last video. This time I'm going to need to use a smaller diameter soldering tip. Now to remove the USB 2.0 cable that we soldered in from our last video. Now to the fun part, find the right connections. This USB 3.0 extension cable that I found in the corner of the room should work. Now to the hardest part, last time it was only 4 wires, this time we're looking at 8 wires. This took a long time. I had to even redo some soldering because I attached the wrong pins. Don't worry, I won't make you watch all that, so we'll just fast forward. Last time it was a cakewalk compared to this time, but we did it. Now to test all the wires to make sure I didn't short anything. A little bit of hot glue, 
to secure the wires. Some more testing. Turns out that the other shield wire is made of aluminum, which cannot be soldered. So I'm going to just remove it. This should be fun, finding the best way to route the wires back into the case. Again, I had to try several ways to make it work, and unfortunately, I had to make another unexpected modification. I had to keep the speaker partially detached. I know. Some of you might not like this. We did it. The speaker still bothers me, but I think the trade-off will be worth it. Now to find space inside for the NVMe memory. We used a 2242M2 size, but as you can see there is plenty of room for the 2280 size memory stick. Is this thing going to work? Yes! Hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. Please join us next time as we attempt another crazy idea. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out.